This video will summarize improvements to optimize the infamous 128 megabyte upgrade to the Xbox 1.6 thought to be impossible. Kudos go to prehistoric man who pioneered that upgrade through savvy reverse engineering and repeated successfully by Tito in his professional video demonstrating the process for this mod. A couple of years later, it was time for me to follow their path and upgrade my own 1.6 Xbox. I followed Tito's process, bending my new RAM chips 90 degrees, but that failed for one of the four chips, which broke one of the pins. Under the microscope, I found that 90 degree bends resulted in cracks at the upper surface of some of the pins, so I tried bending the pins less, aiming for 60 degrees. Either way, this mod is slow and difficult. The success at soldering was mixed at best. Some pins would remain detached and others would suffer from deep bridging which was not easily cleared as the bridge would sometimes go behind the pins. While removing the chip to start over, I lost a couple of pads on my motherboard. It was time to rethink the whole process and find a better way. So what I did is get two RAM chips on top of one another and, and took a picture, which I blew up to a known scale by using reference dimensions. I then created on top of the picture a set of segmented lines to represent the shape of the pin so I could maintain the full length of the pin for later modification. With these segments, we can show that when we bend the pin, we clearly see two problems. The first is a small radius at the top of the pin, which creates a high stress area, and indeed I've had a pin that broke. Secondly, there's a large gap at the bottom of the pin with the lower pin that just makes it difficult to solder the two pins together. There are a couple of ways around this, uh, but both are difficult and lengthy. Either pre-solder the bottom of each pin, which is what Tito did, or try to push the solder from the bottom to the top pin. But either way, this is difficult and not always successful. Onward to the solution, which is to redraw the segmented line shown here in green. What we see is that the exit of the pin from the chip is maintained, so there is no undue stress. I was also able to maintain the bend radius of the first bend, so no change there. I did unfold the second bend some, such that the tip of the pin aligns with the same angle as the lower RAM pin. This is going to make it easier to solder the pins together. For the tool design, what we're interested in is the middle mold line, or rather the inside mold line. That is the lower line of the pin, that is what I used to make my calculations. Because the drawing is at a known scale, I was able to pull out all the dimensions that I needed and transfer those to FreeCAD, which is what I used to design the tools. There are three tools that can be 3D printed as a result of this research. The base and the cover to modify the pins and a RAM alignment tool to aid positioning the modified pin on the motherboard. Let's go through on how to use them. Place the chip on the center of the base, making sure it is properly aligned. I like to mark the RAM chip with a silver sharpie so I never forget the proper orientation. Grab the cover, align the notch with the base, and press down moderately hard to reshape the pins. Pull the cover and base apart and the chip will usually stay stuck in the cover. This is normal. Notice how the chip select pin, pin 28, was not bent since it should not be soldered to the existing RAM chip. Finally use the end of a pencil or a pen to pop the chip from the cover. Now we see the modified chip with another view of the chip select pin. Notice how all the other pins are properly and evenly bent as you would expect. I am still working on a couple of new techniques to expedite the soldering process, which will be the subject of a part two to this video. Here I am using a bead of solder paste as an alternative, which worked, but not as well as I had hoped. The alignment tool is pretty simple to use. Insert the tool at an angle using one leg and rotate the remainder aligning the two remaining legs with the opposite corner of the existing chip. Go gently and you might feel a light click as well. The new chip is inserted at an angle using tweezers or even your fingers and should align with the bottom chip all by itself. Afterwards, with light pressure on top of the two chips, tack a few corner pins to secure the two chips together. Finally, Solder 99 pins, that is all the pins except for the chip select pin using your favorite soldering technique. Again, a topic for a different video which I will make available soon. What you see here is that I relied on the bead of a soldier paste between the pins to do its magic, but I had a handful of bridges that I had to clear. Thankfully, as opposed to my previous disaster, these bridges were easy to remove.
then you use a dental pick to make sure that all the pins were connected. Finally, it was time to install the chip select wire to the motherboard and then to its corresponding pin on the chip. With all of that done, I could finally go through the process of cleaning the excess flux with alcohol. I will take the opportunity of this pause to introduce myself. My name is Mike at eXp Systems. I live in Seattle uh, with an aerospace engineering career that has taken me from the Royal Canadian Air Force to flight testing airplanes and helicopters for the military and manufacturers. After cleaning, I used some captain tape to secure the wire and I proceeded with the continuity check which went well. Except that there is one thing that nobody else seemed to mention is that some of the pins are interconnected by design and therefore are not an indication of a bridge. These handful of pins can be safely ignored. Again, something I will document in part two of the video. The moment of truth. It is time to plug in the Xbox and boot to the X-Blast BIOS for the RAM test, which went as expected. Well, it is time to wrap up this video. So far, I have soldered multiple chips successfully, and when using these tools, my success rate is now at 100%. To be clear, this is not casual work. This requires the right tools. For example, I have found that using a microscope is much more effective than using magnifying glasses. The 3D printed tools presented here are released as an open source project on GitHub, and the link is provided in the description below. The license is generous and allows anyone to make, modify, or even sell these tools, which are easily 3D printed. Finally, coming soon will be the part two video of various soldering techniques, which is a subject on its own and requires a separate discussion with the goal to optimize that portion of the process. I am also planning a part three related to this upgrade, but that will be for later, although here is a small hint.